Quinn stole my fiancé and married him. But her plan backfired, and I finally got my freedom. Now my parents are shocked. I am supposed to get married to someone I don't love. I'm a twin and my sister was literally the prodigal child, except she isn't remorseful. Now I suffer because of her actions. My parents don't let me do what I want and my life is basically planned because they are afraid that I would turn out like my sister. We were born into a decent family and we got whatever we needed but my sister was never satisfied. She thought I got extra privileges and it was ridiculous to me because we got the same things. She always thought we were in some form of competition and always tried to do better than me or take what was mine. She thought my parents saw me as their favorite. It looked like that because she was mainly ungrateful and never happy about what she got. I would be happy with whatever I got, so they were more inclined to favor me. She caused it, but it became glaring as time went on that I was the favorite. Not because they wanted me to be, but because my sister wasn't exactly the best child. At some point, she took a chunk of money and ran away. My father knew where she had gone, but he decided to let her be. If she wanted to be wayward, she could. My parents were fed up with trying to get her to understand how to behave. What my sister did impacted my parents a lot because I no longer was free to do what I wanted. They thought they gave us too much liberty, which was why my sister turned out the way she did. The day my sister left was the last time I got what I wanted. At first, I thought I had to behave properly and do what my parents wanted because they were hurting because of my sister. I was basically the sacrifice and didn't know how to get out of it. My friends, the places I could go, and even my university course was picked by my parents. This made me dislike my sister even more. I wished she would just come back so I could have my life back. There were things I liked to do that I wasn't allowed to do anymore. It was so unfair that I suffered for my sister's mistakes. My parents introduced me to someone they thought I should marry, and I just went with the flow. We didn't click in a romantic way though we could pass as friends. I wasn't attracted to him, and ours wasn't a typical arranged marriage. There was no deal or specific reason why we had to get married. It was more like harmless matchmaking. My parents just knew his parents, he also was attracted to me and my parents thought he would be good for me. I didn't know how to say no to my parents because for so many years, I had done what they wanted, so it was just easier to go with it. I wasn't happy at all, but my wedding day was getting closer and closer. We were going to have a court wedding because I didn't want any ceremony. I wasn't exactly excited to be getting married anyways. We had just planned a little reception afterward for our families and closest friends. I wasn't proud that I couldn't stand up for what I wanted, so I'd rather not announce my wedding to the world by having a grand ceremony. I was running a little late to get to the court, but I spotted my twin sister with my husband when I did. She had taken my place and was getting married to my fiancé. She most likely thought she would be hurting me by doing that. Little did she know that she had just saved me from myself and my need to not disappoint my parents. I was super happy to not be getting married. No one expected her to be at my wedding, so they probably didn't suspect anything at all. I stayed hidden until after everything was done to make sure that it was legal and then attended the reception. Everyone was beyond shocked. When my parents saw me, they realized what had happened. They are my parents, so if anyone couldn't figure it out, they would. Before they could say anything, I asked for permission to speak. I thanked my sister for showing me that I really didn't want to get married and I shouldn't just because I wanted to please my parents. I apologized to my fiancé for bringing him into the drama and said that I didn't want to marry him, not because he wasn't lovely but because I wasn't in love with him. You should have seen the disappointment on my sister's face. She thought she was ruining the happiest day of my life, and she felt humiliated. My parents expressed their utter disappointment. They couldn't believe that she would do a thing like that. It was a serious thing and she could go to jail for impersonating me. My fiancé and his family were going to call the police. I didn't let that happen because I wouldn't be a free woman if she didn't. It was chaotic but the best thing to happen for me. My mom asked why I wasn't open about how I felt about the marriage because they didn't know they were forcing me to do what I didn't want. I told them that they had basically controlled my life since my sister disappointed them and they made me feel like I was being punished because of her. I didn't think that they would let me be if I told them I didn't want to get married. I was sorry to have let on my fiancé. I felt horrible for doing that, mainly because he wasn't forced. He was genuinely attracted to me. I thought it was better that he knew the truth and that it would be unfair to go into an unhappy marriage. Update 1, my fiancé and sister annulled the marriage the next day. My parents asked her to leave and never come back again. She left the first time on her own and when she came back, she caused even more trouble. My parents were embarrassed and sad. I, on the other hand, got my freedom. My sister didn't expect that she was actually helping me by pulling her stunt. If she knew that I didn't want to get married, she wouldn't have disrupted the marriage. Apparently, she moved back to the city. She heard that I was getting married, 
and she took it as her perfect opportunity to hurt me. I have always wondered what I did to her and why she hated me so much. Schwa's my identical twin. We were supposed to love each other and be inseparable, as far as I know. We have never been close, even when we were still very young. After everything she did, she still behaved awfully to me. That was when I decided that it would be better for me to see myself as an only child because my sister would never be who we wanted her to be as a family. All the while she was away, I thought that one day she would come back and we would live happily ever after. Well, that is a fairy tale because it doesn't seem like it's going to happen for me that way. I'm going to figure out myself and what exactly I want to do because I'm not going back to being that girl who just does what her parents want because she is afraid of disappointing them. I am also going to give my ex some space. I don't expect him to behave like nothing happened and we can automatically be friends. I hope he can forgive me and we can have a friendly relationship but if he wants nothing to do with me, I would totally understand. I think I needed a breather. I wanted to do something spontaneous that my parents had no hand in, so I decided to travel. I don't know where yet, but I'm excited. Update 2, I traveled like I said I would. At first, I was anxious about it, but I pushed myself over the edge, and it was just what I needed. My parents understand how they can loosen their tight grip on me and let me blossom. It was too late to end up like my twin sister. I didn't make any drastic changes. I had maintained my career path even though it was my parents' choice, but I actually loved it. The changes were more internal. During my trip, I discovered myself and what I liked instead of just trying to be the opposite of my twin sister. I didn't realize that I felt so pressured to always do the right thing and say the right things that I didn't speak my mind even when I didn't agree with something. I asked to meet my ex, and I was grateful that we agreed. This was six months after we were supposed to get married. I was so happy that we met and actually laughed it off. In the six months that I was away, I always had at the back of my mind that I had hurt someone and I really wanted to make amends if he would let me. Apart from him being my fiancé, we were actually friends, so I was glad to have my friend back even though I wasn't going to marry him. He was ready to get married, so he would go back into the dating scene. I really hope that he finds someone who loves him for the incredible person he is. I, on the other hand, wanted to wait. I was in no rush because I wanted to enjoy my own space for a while and explore my newfound freedom. I don't hate my sister because this time, she actually helped me even if it was not intentional, but my parents want nothing to do with her, and I have tried to reach her, but she doesn't want to speak to me either. I can live my life without her because that is what I have always done. Opinion 1, not the a-hole. Your sister played herself, and I think what she did was needed so you could escape. Your fiancé, though, I feel for him. Opinion 2, not the a-hole. Why do I feel like your sister knew you didn't want to be married and deliberately took your place to stop you? I have a very active mind, so it may just be in my head, you should get to talk to her to make sure. Some quick background knowledge, my mom died when I was 8 years old, and upon her passing, my dad and I discovered she was much wealthier than we thought. She set up an education fund with enough money to put me through college and grad school, and attend a private school. I attended a private school I had a partial scholarship to, and then went to college on a full scholarship I worked insanely hard for. I went to grad school on no scholarship, so I dipped into a bit of the education money. However, after all of that, I still had quite a bit of money left over, so I planned to use it for any kids I had in the future. And now the present, my biological daughter, Anna, 17 female, has attended a private high school and recently got into a good college on a partial scholarship. She wants to go to medical school. Between the three of those, if she can get a partial scholarship to medical school, I would be able to help her out significantly, so she would be in very little debt. I recognized how insanely privileged we are to have this opportunity, and both my daughter and I are super happy to have it. I have a stepson, Jake, 18 male, who is also going to college this fall. He didn't go to the same high school as Anna, because he didn't get in, so he went to the local public school. He's still an excellent athlete and student, and that landed him a partial scholarship at his top choice college. Obviously, I was super elated and super proud of both my children. Here's where the issue comes in. My husband and I, who have been married for three years now, came up with a plan for parenting slash financing and all that stuff. We plan to keep most of the money separate when it comes to kids. Obviously, we both contribute to buying them presents and stuff, but we left cars, college, etc., up to the other one, and it's worked out pretty well. Both Anna and Jake have cars that they have paid for, and we matched whatever they saved. I matched for Anna, and my husband matched for Jake. So, for college, it was obviously decided my husband had Jake's stuff under control, and I'd be dealing with Anna's. However, my husband finds it very unfair that Anna will be in no debt, and Jake will be in debt, since I'm covering Anna's college costs, but not Jake's. 
My husband says it's unfair that Anna will have an easier life than Jake, and calls both of us spoiled and entitled children for not sharing the money. My mother-in-law also dropped by yesterday and told me I was being unfair and I should help Jake out, and that I clearly loved him less. I explained to both of them that this was the agreement my husband agreed to and he only has a problem because Anna will end up doing better now. Mother-in-law and husband are both giving me and Anna the silent treatment. Am I the a-hole? Edit, Jake's mother is out of the picture, she left years ago and neither Jake nor my husband is in contact with her or knows where she is, as far as I'm aware at least. Anna's father died soon after she was born. Opinion 1, not the a-hole, the two of you had an agreement which had no problem until now. What does Jake think about this situation? It sounds like your husband is just unhappy that his biological son isn't doing as well as your biological daughter. I think Jake wishes he had the money, but he's not blowing it out of proportion and is currently asking his grandmother and dad to drop it. He's being very nice to both Anna and I, it's his father who is dragging this out. My wife and I, 28 male and 26 female, have been married for over two years now. We both have promising careers but neither of us are making a ton of money yet, we've been largely living paycheck to paycheck since we got together. We've been sleeping on a way too old mattress and box spring since we got married that she inherited from some family member, and we've both been complaining about it. My side in particular has had a bad spring which was constantly digging into my side or lower back. We've both been researching mattresses and have agreed that we need to buy something new and better as soon as we are able. So, anyway, a couple of weeks ago I went back home to attend my cousin's wedding. My wife wasn't able to go because she couldn't get off work. When I got home my wife told me to go look in the bedroom. When I went I saw a new mattress on top of a new adjustable frame. It was wrapped in a red ribbon. My wife followed me in and said tada. When I asked her what was going on she told me that she had been slowly socking away money from her paychecks to buy a new bed, and that she had gone ahead and bought a nice, new, hybrid mattress with an adjustable frame so that we could watch TV in bed together. She seemed really excited about it. I, however, wasn't happy. I told her that a mattress was a major purpose and that we should have decided on it together to make sure that it was something that we both liked. She said that she was really disappointed in my response and that she'd wanted to surprise me by saving up her own money and buying something nice that we needed, and that she'd thought I'd be happy. She said that surely the new bed was better than the old and that I should just be grateful to be sleeping on something better since I didn't have to put any money in. But I think it was a major purchase and she should have talked to me first, even if she did use her own money. Opinion 1, you are the a-hole. I did something like that, in a very similar situation. I was so excited to see how happy my first husband would have been. The reaction was the same. That was the last time I did anything. My second husband and I just celebrated 17 years. In the beginning many times women treat their partners how they want to be treated. In the end, they treat them how they are treated. Opinion 2, you are the a-hole. Just because it's a major purchase, doesn't mean you need to discuss it. Your wife made sure that it wouldn't impact your finances in the future by saving up for it and buying it in cash. You didn't seem to notice what she was socking away, so it wasn't impacting you or your family finances. Your wife did you both a solid. I can't tell you how to feel, so I can't say you should feel grateful. But your behavior is crappy and controlling, and you seem to want to be a victim. Don't do that. Since it's a fairly expensive purchase and it's something they'll both use, I think it's very normal and reasonable to want to discuss it. I don't think that makes him the a-hole. I do agree that he is an a-hole because he was really ungrateful rather than thanking her, trying it out, and communicating about it after that to say I love it slash could we return it and find something that works a bit better for us, and it's important to me to discuss these things. He did say they were researching mattresses so it's fairly likely she made an informed purchase as they'd already discussed one slash aspects they wanted slash didn't want. 